Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We are not in Foundry VTT today. We are in D&D &D Beyond. I want to talk about challenge ratings uh, and the creation of counters and using challenge ratings to do so. So we've got quite a range of people um, on this channel, uh, people with lots of experience of playing, but no experience of VTTs or specifically Foundry. And we've got lots of people who are experienced with both. And we've got people who are learning Foundry VTT as they're also learning to play D&D &D, or our players and now they're learning to DM. So this kind of goes out to some of those people who are fairly new to creating their own adventures and encounters and how the heck does that work. Uh, so not directly related to Foundry, although of course we can use those things in there. So why am I in D&D &D Beyond? So... Um, when we look at the Dungeon Master's Guide, so the basic rules, DMG, uh, if you're looking on page 82, it talks about combat encounter difficulty, easy, medium, hard, and deadly encounters. And then it waffles on about levels of experience and this thing called challenge rating, uh, which is great. It gives you a way of evaluating a particular group of monsters to see how challenging they're going to be for a particular given party. But um, you end up sitting down with a pen and paper, and when you're trying to create encounters and create them balanced, that can be a bit fiddly and it can be a bit time-consuming. So anything we can do to make that more effective, more efficient, is going to be good for us, so we can focus on story, not focus on mechanics. And that's why we're in D&D &D Beyond. So if you don't have an account for D&D Beyond, uh, you can set one up 100% free and you can access some of their tools on here. So we've talked a little bit about this previously in collections. You can keep all your characters on here, um, which is great because D&D Beyond is a really easy way for you to be able to manage your characters, build your characters and level your characters uh, and then import them into your preferred VTT or print them out if you're doing face to face or just look at them on screen. So it's really, really handy. It limits those options. You can also develop your campaigns on here that you can then pull through to things like above VTT that we have briefly looked at previously. And I've certainly run games on there and that works OK. Nothing like as powerful as Foundry, um, but I've run campaigns on there. But there's also this, it says it's in beta, or beta, depending how you want to pronounce it. It says it's in beta still, but there is a thing called My Encounters. And this is what's really useful for doing this, what we're about talking about in this video, and using D&D &D Beyond. There's lots of, if you Google D&D &D challenge rating, there's people who've got charts and tables and all sorts of things. But it's all built in here. So in My Encounters, you can see I've just clicked through to it. Um, I've built a couple of encounters here. We've got the Gabling, Goblin Ambush, not the Gabbling anything. Um, I've got the Wave Echo Cave Great Cavern, uh, and I can create any adventures I want. But let's first of all, let's look at the Goblin Ambush. Okay, so I'm going to come in, click on this, and it's going to take me through to this, and it's going to give me a short summary for that encounter. It tells me that this encounter is going to be medium difficulty, uh, how much experience in total the players will get and how much each player will earn from this. So really, really nice. Nice and easy. It tells me which monsters are in here. We've got four goblins, a challenge rating of a quarter each, uh, and they're worth 50 experience points each. But what, what does that all mean? <laughs> so the way challenge rating works basically is take the average of your player character's level. So if you've got four players, first level, they should match with one creature of a CR of one. That is kind of how it works. Okay, so take the average level of the party, divide by um, uh, divide by the, um, the number of party members, and that gives you a number, and that's kind of what a medium rated encounter should be. Uh, but again, uh, uh, maths, you know, <laughs> not everybody wants to sit there with a calculator working that out. So this is going to do it for us. So let's have a look at this. If I go to edit this encounter, first of all, what we can see on the right hand side is a repetition of this. Um, and we can see that this is saying it's medium difficulty. There's little pop ups here for you. OK, and it references the Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, it tells you how much XP they're getting, etc. And we've got our monsters down here. 
But remember, this is encounter that is relative to a particular group of adventurers because four goblins against one first level character is going to be tough. Four goblins against four tenth level characters is, is going to be flotting, uh, swatting flies. So how do we work that bit out? Well, at the top here, we can see it says number of characters and it's calculating that av average party level to be 1.4. And just next to this here, we've got Manage Characters. If I click on this, this is the party that I have that comes from one of my campaigns that I've set up above VTT World that I just created for testing. And these, this is the party members in here. So we've got, you'll recognise some of these if you've played Baldur's Gate 3, of course. Uh, we've got a first level fighter, first level cleric, first level barbarian, a first level rogue, and a third level wizard. So where we get different um, different levels of characters mixed in the same party that's what starts to make it even more complex with the maths and things it's not difficult maths but who wants to do that when you don't have to by taking this this is saying right we've got five characters their average party is 1.4 so average party of 1.4 we've got four goblins that are a cr of a fourth each so four of those that gives a total CR of this encounter to be one against a party level of 1.4 so this is you know easy medium this should not prove much of a challenge at all the characters should have no drama with this should be a little bit exciting but there's no real risk of the whole party being wiped out unless they do something stupid because if they do something stupid repeatedly they deserve to get a total party wipe okay your job as the dm is not to make sure they survive it's to challenge them and make them think and sometimes they have to run away okay so we can um we can edit this um, i'm in edit right now and i can edit this to change that cr rating so on the right hand side here if i click this negative number it takes it down to three goblins okay so we now got three goblins and of course that drops how challenging this is and you can see that this slider bar here has dropped into the green and it's now saying actually for this party this is now an easy encounter okay it's not challenging really um that doesn't mean you can't you don't avoid easy encounters they can be fun they can break some tension um, they can empower the characters especially if they've had a major defeat recently absolutely occasionally throw a fight at them that is just a bit of a walkover uh, especially if you want them to you know build up their arrogance just a bit before you crush them later on um, so we can take this down again and you can see that this now has dropped again to be trivial it's just so you know are you even going to bother rolling dice kind of thing now the i would say if you've got this party of five characters coming into an encounter with two goblins if it calculates a trivial for me as the DM, that would be flagging going, these goblins are not going to want to fight. They're not idiots. I know they're fairly simple, not well educated, but they've got a survival instinct. They are probably going to do everything they can to avoid combat with the party because they'll die. They know they're going to die. All right, so let's ramp this number up the other way. So back at four, we pop it back into medium. We can go to five. Once we get to six goblins, this is now starting to become a hard encounter. The party are outnumbered, for one thing, um, by these creatures. And we can take it beyond that into deadly. Now, this is going to very much depend on your party. But what this is looking at is how many things can hit, what kind of damage can they deal, uh, versus what likely average kind of abilities that party is going to have. So it's not going to have the best armor class yet because they haven't got the right armor. They haven't been able to buy all the magical items and things like that. So it's assuming a very average party. Uh, but it's a really nice way of you being able to balance that. So you can throw whatever you want at your encounter and then balance it. And it might be that you need to break an encounter up into smaller pieces. Okay, so let's go look at a different encounter then. So back to my encounters. And I'm going to look at this Wave Echo Cave, the Great Cavern. Uh, and let me edit that one. So now when I bring this in, this is the same party. So it says up here, average level 1.4. Excuse me. 
<laughs> level 1.4 it's the same party uh, and this wave echo cave is a deadly encounter for them so obviously wave echo cave that's from the Fandelva campaign that's part of chapter 4 they should not be getting to there at first level so if they did we could try and scale it down make it hard or even make it easy uh, I would say if they're that far ahead we wouldn't want to make it too easy but there's supposed to be five of these now if I go to manage characters here again and pull this up if we've got uh, so these are all first level except Gale here who is level three if I click on these dots I can hide that character and it says hidden for from, from difficulty calculations and it's now calculating that average party level as one because it's taking him out of that calculation and that will affect what's happening over here if I drop it to one ghoul it's now still a medium encounter so you can adjust your party using this method if you need to or if you decide that you know actually they're gonna I'm gonna send an NPC with them I'm gonna send a second level NPC to guard them you can just add in this extra character here that will alter those calculations this one ghoul because of that extra person is now trivial uh, and it's we now have to have three ghouls for that to become hard uh, because again this average party level is now 1.5 because we've got that extra person on board at level two so you can see how it works and you can adjust the party levels um, and also adjust or rather look at your encounter to find out just how bad it is now it's up to you to decide whether you want to throw lots of hard encounters medium encounters and things at your party but the rule of thumb is that most encounters should be about where they need to be so they should be about a medium difficulty with um, certain encounters by design being tougher um, and some trivial not trivial but the easy encounters thrown in as well to give them a bit of a break now you may decide that your big bad guy so your ultimate evil will always start off as being a very deadly combat if they encounter them too soon with the idea is that they will build levels as they're trying to get to find out who the big bad is uh, get clues maybe track down equipment that will help against them and things like that so they will level up to a point where that big bad encounter will become a hard encounter rather than deadly um, but absolutely you can have it that if they miss some of those clues they don't get some of those additional support items they don't win over the village who are going to help they don't go and uh, discover the dragon slayer sword in the barrow if they don't do those things then yeah this encounter could still stay as deadly the lesson for the party is sometimes run away uh, and don't go into battles if you're not prepared um, Sun Tzu's art of war is very useful <laughs> don't ever engage in a battle unless you know you can win uh, that kind of stuff so it's really really useful for us being able to do that let's create one from scratch completely from scratch going to create a new encounter here uh, name of my encounter let's call it oh look example encounter there we go I don't know why it's got that but there we go very useful um, I need to um, I can manage my characters yep so let's say I'm going to use this party yeah no drama whatsoever it's audio 1.4 there's some really good things I can do here let's get rid of all of these things here this is going to just list every single creature there's lots of them from all of the sources I have so monster manual spell jammer all, all sorts of different things that we have access to but on the left here as you can see I can filter it so if I know I want an encounter in the desert I can filter by kinds of creatures that we would find in the desert if I want to I can um, restrict where it's pulling these creatures from so it's not pulling them all from any place I might say I just want to go with standard monster manuals you can do that uh, alignment if you're using alignment you can do by that and of course if you've got homebrew stuff that you've built in D&D Beyond you can get that as well all right we can now set by challenge rating and by size now I don't worry about size because if it's huge but easy 
it's about how difficult the fight is. So before we go by challenge rating and sort that out, uh, if we look here, uh, they're in alphabetical order, but we're given the type, we're given the size, we are given their CR rating, so that's their challenge rating of this creature on its own. So an adult blue dragon is a challenge rating of 16, which means it's a good match for a party of four characters who are 16th level. So you straight away, you know how tough that is. And what I really like is it gives you this automatic calculation of how difficult this is for the party we've got up here, our average party of 1.4. As you can see, understandably, that is uh, going to be a deadly encounter. So let's bring down, just by bringing in these end bits over on the left, I can bring this down and say, well, hang on a minute, let's drag that challenge rating down. Let's say we bring it down to five, um, and I want creatures that are a minimum of challenge rating a half. We've suddenly reduce this list down significantly which is great of course yeah i can go to the source and say actually how about we say whoops i didn't mean to scroll the whole page uh how about we only duh, 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 when i can find it we only take from the monster manual okay so we're only listing creatures we might find in the desert that are in the monster manual that are a cr challenge rating of a half up to a challenge rating of a five. Uh, and this is suddenly a much shorter list. So it makes it really nice for you to be able to put sensible things in that match with your characters. You can then use this difficulty here. Now often, of course, when you're building encounters, you already know what you're expecting them to find. Oh yeah, they're gonna be dealing with goblins a lot and because the mission is about taking out some you know, pesky goblins. Um, but it might not be that. It might be that you want to create random encounters and things like that. And this is a good way you can do it. Uh, right, so what should we have here? Um, should we chuck in some Thakreen? Let's chuck in some Thakreen. So I can just click Add here. And it's going to stick my Thakreen up here. Uh, and this is an easy encounter, one of them. So now I can decide how many I want. See, so two of them is going to jump straight to a hard encounter because it's a CR1 creature. I need to decide what I'm going to do here. You might decide, actually, I am going to add two of them, but I'm going to have one of them's already wounded. So they are perhaps left behind from a hunting party. One of them's been wounded. The other one stayed behind to care for them until they're fit enough to move. And, of course, then the players encounter them. So one of these is already going to be on half hit points or something. You can do that as well, of course. Uh, but it's just a really nice way of being able to manage stuff. Um, yeah, and work it out. Let's add another character on. Let's say what happens if we add a 10th level character on. Obviously very disproportionate. Uh, and now suddenly we are finding that this is this encounter is ridiculous. It's just too easy. Let's add a half ogre in. Now there's two Thakreen and a half ogre. And it's still an easy encounter. Well, what if there's two half ogres? It's still easy. But you can just build, your, you can just build them like this. You know? All right, so there's four Thakreen and two Half Ogres. Great. However you want to balance it. All right, so I'm going to stop going on about that. Another consideration, though, and this is quite an important one, is this calculation about how difficult this encounter is based on the party, based on the monsters. It's not taking into account all of the magic items that you've given to your party. It assumes an average... Uh, distribution of magic items whether that's armor magic wands and things like that what is an average distribution <laughs> it's going to vary for every single game some people choose to play very magic light yes spells all over the place but magic items are actually really rare and precious um, i tend to lead in that lean in that direction so they really do treasure those items other dms might be much more willing to throw stuff around um, everybody, you know, by the time they get to second level, everybody's got one magic item of some description. By the time they get to fourth level, everybody's got a magic weapon and probably half the party got magic armor. So you need to kind of decide the flow of magic in your world, uh, how much you're going to give. And it's not a problem if you give loads. Um, it can create problems for the DM if, if you're giving out lots of wondrous items because you're giving them more problem solving methods. But from a combat point of view, it doesn't matter. 
you need to balance your encounters. So what you could choose to do, and I've not done this because I've not had this problem, but what you could choose to do is to use, say, well, actually, I've got five people because of the magic items I'm giving them, and I'm giving them quite a lot, I can use this artificial extra person in my encounter to work out what actually is going to be a balanced encounter for my party with all those extra magical things I keep throwing at them. But a lot of it's going to come down to experience. You're going to have to run some encounters that you think are medium and see how they go. Because if they're getting their backsides kicked, maybe your medium encounter for that group is actually hard. Again, you can come in and use this and you could use this artificial inflation of your party to adjust that if you wanted to. Um, or just bearing in mind that you want to keep your your uh, difficulties uh, down towards the high easy um, or low medium for your, you know, your average encounters. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so when you're designing your adventures, you're designing your games, you're designing your random encounters and things, this is a brilliant tool to do it because it does all the hard work for you. It does all the calculations. You just need to go, what creatures do I want? That's that's what I'm wanting in this mix. It's going against this party. Oh, hang on a minute. Now I need to balance it. And you might need to, as I said before, you might need to say, well, actually, because I do want these half ogres in the encounter and the Thakreen, I'm either going to have to balance the numbers very carefully or maybe split them up into two encounters. Maybe they encounter the Thakreen first, who, if they talk to them, say that they're running away from or trying to escape or they got slaughtered by the half-ogres. And then they encounter the half-ogres. Even if they're quite close together, effectively it's two different encounters or two different combat rounds. That's another thing you can do. I hope that's been useful. Um... Challenge rating is not perfect, not by any means, but I think this is the really a really good start place to help you understand how challenging a given encounter is going to be, um, and then you can adjust based on your party. But do what works for your group. Yes, challenge them. Yes, some fights should be really hard, but if you throw really hard fights at them all the time, they will just really struggle, and the chances are they won't like it. Thanks for watching. Take care.